Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amun Wan Gubar, back with another lesson, Lord willing to edify and to feed the lambs of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh through the Holy Spirit. Rakakwadash, Lord willing, this is edifying straight to the point. All right, now on the screen is a picture of of the devil Edomite Prince Philip, all right, of uh, England, okay, and this is how we look now. You know, he's um he's uh, I think he's been admitted into the hospital today or yesterday or sometime sometime this week, but pretty much the devil's on his deathbed. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I've been seeing news pop up on him. Or whatever, so you know you could go check it out. You know, check it out for yourself. You know, Prince Philip, um, ninety nine years old in the hospital. All right, from different news outlets, Prince Philip, husband of UK's Queen Elizabeth, the second admitted to the hospital, British Queen husband Prince Philip admitted to the hospital. Blah 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 blah. blah. So yeah, this devil is probably on his deathbed. You know what I'm saying? He's probably on his deathbed. He's on his way out of here. Going to go to the spirit world probably and see the most high, the creator, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, who are dark-skinned men, all right, who's about to set up their rulership on this planet Earth through through his son, Yahweh Shah, and have the Israelites, all right, from the, tribe of, from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, all right, from Ephraim on down to the other northern kingdoms, from, Ist you know, from Ephraim to Issachar, all right, all ruling and reigning over these devils in this new world to come. All right, because they think they're about to establish their new world order. Well, the scriptures say that in Job, the 20th chapter, that they're not going to be able to fulfill their um their new world order or their enterprise. All right, but in this lesson, I, you know, I kind of want to talk about how that this is a tall tale sign that we know that we are at the end. And part of that, part of that sign is that this devil, all right, and I'm just using his photo, all right, okay, there's many, there's millions of other devils I could have used, but I'm using this devil right here, you can see the devil, you know, in his devil's eyes, you know, pure evil, pure wickedness, there's nothing pure, there's nothing white about this, man, there's absolutely nothing white about this, there's nothing righteous about this, this is pure evil, okay, and it works, do tell, you know what I'm saying, but one of the major signs that we know that we are at the end is because one of the scriptures is this right here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'll start at 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and by our gathering together unto him, which Yahweh Shai is coming back. Uh, year 2021, hasten it the day of the coming of our Lord. Now we are praying and hoping and hasten it that the Lord come back and deliver us out of his captivity real soon. All right, Lord willing, things pop off this year. And the Lord makes his return. Okay, because that's the Father's will. That's the will of the Most High. Let his will be done. Uh, Matthew is the sixth chapter. It talks about the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the Most High's will be done. All right? So our Lord is coming back. And it says, and by our gathering together unto him. Now, what's happening on earth right now today? In present time, which which has been happening for decades, okay, but more so now in the latter days is that we are gathering together unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to the coming of our Lord. All right, how is that happening? Is by the Israelites waking up. All right, the Lord raising up the Israelites from all the tribes. All right, and preaching and, and, and proclaiming the acceptable day of the Lord and preaching the downfall of this so-called white man's kingdom and letting the world know who the Edomites are. That's a major prophecy that was supposed to happen. So verse 2 says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Hamashiach, which is to say the Lord or Christ so-called, which is Hamashiach the anointed, is at hand. The day of the Lord is at hand. The day of Yahweh is at hand. And we are seeing the signs throughout the whole earth that the day of the Lord is at hand. All right, that's why all types of calamities is happening. All right, 2021 started off as a beautiful year. All right, why? Because it was prophetically beautiful. All right, why? Because all the signs of the prophecy started to, to be declared. 
um, Habakkuk, the second chapter, all right, it says at the end it shall speak in Allah, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. Because what's, what's happening is that the Lord is going to raise up, raise up um, the elect to, to rule and reign upon his earth and to go about establishing righteousness. All right, the Lord is about to make things beautiful and perfect on this earth. All right, a job in which the devil could not have done or no other nation on this earth could have done. It was given to the elect to make this earth beautiful, man. To make this earth righteous through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. All right. So the day of our Lord is at hand. And verse three is the point. It says, "Let no man deceive you by any means." All right. Don't let don't be deceived by any means, especially at the time when this was written, roughly around two thousand years ago. It says, "For that day shall not come." All right. The day of our Lord shall not come except there come a falling away first. So falling away had to happen first. And what what was the falling away that happened? It was the Israelites falling away from their nationality, all right, being, um, having Jerusalem, our homeland, stripped from us, being, uh, being sieged, okay, being exiled into other lands, okay, being persecuted, okay, the diaspora, we had to disperse from our homeland, all right, we had to be scattered, all right, in, us, in, in order for, for certain prophecies to come to pass, because the book of Deuteronomy is written years, all right, hundreds of years before these prophecies or these uh, books was written. So those prophecies in Deuteronomy had to happen, you know, mainly the 28th chapter. So it says, for that day shall not come except they come a falling away first. So we have to fall away as a nation. We have to go into slavery, captivity, forget our identity, forget everything we've known and been taught, forget everything about what we knew. All right. All that had time. We had to, we had to fall away completely from our identity. Jeremiah 17 says, um, Jeremiah 17 and 4 says that thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage which I have given thee. Alright, so Israel alright, had to discontinue from their heritage. So that was a falling away. But there's many prophecies that says that Israel would would, would remember themselves. That's all uh, Baruch the second chapter, which you know I bring out all the time. Um from the 29th verse all the way to the end. In the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. So we have to fall away and forget who we were. All right, in order for certain prophecies to come to pass. So anyway, it says, And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who's the man of sin? Esau is the man of sin. All right, Esau is the man of sin, and he had to be revealed for being an Edomite. The son of perdition, which is the, uh, perdition means destruction. Now, Esau was able to prosper for so long because he moved in secrecy. Okay, he moved, he moved in the shadows or in the darkness, so to speak. Okay. The man of sin had to be revealed. Reveal means to pull back the veil or the covering. All right. So the covering of who the Edomites are, you know, to this day have been revealed. All right. And the Lord, through the spirit of Yahweh, Shai, have revealed that secret unto the servant, the prophets. And we've declared, all right, and discovered this man's skirts, you know, and showing the nakedness. I mean, showing the nakedness of this devil, meaning revealing him for who he is. All right. So one of the tall tale signs that we are at the end and that our Lord is about to come is that the scriptures say that it's not going to happen. Yahweh is not going to come back until there's a falling away first, which we fell away. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of destruction. All right. The scriptures talk about that in Romans. All right. Um, that there's a vessel for honor and a vessel for dishonor. Esau is the vessel for dishonor. All right. Perdition means to be destroyed. Okay. Or destruction. Okay. Now Esau was created to be destroyed. All right. He was created to, to teach Israel a lesson on this planet Earth. On how not to ever go off and sin against the Most High again. All right, because that was part of our punishment. Okay? So it says, and that man of sin be revealed. So that's how we know for, for, for without a shadow of a doubt that we are at the absolute end of this world. Okay? Esau's world. Why? Because the son of the son of perdition have been revealed. And this is another way we know it's him. Verse 4 says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. All right. First of all, who's called God? The word Israel itself means Yashar Allah. Yashar Allah. Yashar Allah. Yashar means prince. Oh, he prince. And Allah means power. All right. Yashar Allah. Prince of the power. All right. So Esau opposeth. Okay. He opposeth himself against all that is called God. He exalteth himself above all that is called God. All right. That's why he got us at the bottom and he's at the top. Like the scriptures say, that the um the that the prophecy would that it would, the Lord would make us a tail, and he, and he would be the head. All right, roughly paraphrasing, meaning that we would be at the bottom, Esau would be at the top. And Ecclesiastes said that I've seen servants upon horses, 
I mean, yeah, I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. All right. The things of this earth, you know, rulership and power and everything have been turned upside down. That's how the Lord showed his wrath against us for going off. OK, so Esau Edom opposes himself above all that is called God. OK, which he ultimately opposes himself against Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right. He called like the scripture said, woe to them that call evil good and good evil. All right. Uh, um, Isaiah 29 says, surely you're turning the things upside down shall be esteemed as a pot of clay. All right. Esau pretty much says that the most high was in error when it came to creation. All right. So he's the one that established himself as God upon this earth. All right. So or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, show himself that he is God. So he saw exalt exalted himself. All right. Above the stars and the most high, like the scripture saying Obadiah, all right, he exalted himself above the Israelites. He sit in a temple of the most high, which well, who's the temple? First and foremost, it's talking about the Israelites. The scripture said, I know ye not that you are the temple of the most high. That your body are the temples of the Most High. The scriptures talk about how we are the kingdom of the Most High. And the kingdom of um, Israel don't come with observation, but it comes, um, but it's within you. Just roughly paraphrasing these scriptures. All right, we are the kingdom of heaven. And Esau, Edom, sitteth in the temple of God. I mean, he sit in the temple of the Most High, which, remember, he's a heathen. He don't even, he, he's, he's the, um, like the scriptures say in Revelation that the, um, uh, how would go the nation that are outside the temple, all right? Because you got nations that are outside the temple. All right. You got the, the temple, you know, the temple where you only Israel could dwell. Esau is outside the temple. Okay. He's that nation that's outside that temple. All right. But he put himself in the temple of the Most High, which that, that first and foremost talk about the Israelites. All right. He set himself up above us that he's got. But the Most High is a jealous power. Don't forget that. The Most High is a jealous power. All right. The Heavenly Father sees what Esau is doing to his woman. All right, the Lord, hey, you got a woman, all right, that went off. All right, you, let's say you got a woman, she went off, she she did, you know, whatever she did, whatever by you, you know, but you loved her, you know, she was yours, she was you, she, you took as a virgin, you you know, whatever, then, you know, she went off and then you you, 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 you put her away for a while, but then you see all these nations coming, destroying her, you're going to feel some type of way because that was, that was your first love, you know what I'm saying? And, and she was your first love, man, and that's how the Lord feels, man. You know, to the nation of Israel. And the Lord is a jealous power. He going to jack Esau up for what he did to the children of Israel, man. All right. So it says, so that he, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And, you know, that's exactly what he does. He exalts himself above the thrones of God, above the stars of heaven, all written throughout the book of Obadiah. All right. So that's the tall tale sign that this devil is going down. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, three, oh, excuse me, three days and a half, the spirit of life, all right, three and a half represents 350, 50 years, all right, per se, okay? So after three days and a half, the spirit of the of life from the most high entered into them. So after 350 years, which is a period of time from when we started, you know, the bulk of Israelites started going into slavery, forgot they self. Because remember, it was, it was a period of time where Esau brought us over here in this land and beat our nationality out of us. All right. He destroyed, our, our, you know, the elders of our, our nations, our tribes. All right. And taught us that we was whatever he, you know, niggas, wetbacks, um, American, Negroes, gave us all types of different names. You see that in Roots when Kunta Kete was getting beat and um, Esau was saying that your name is um, Toby. All right. So that's our heritage being beat out of us. So from that point on to now, all right, let's not now, you know, 2021, but let's say 1969, all right, when Abba Bivens, a man by the name of Abba, Viv Abba Bivens, okay, who was Elijah, okay, who was John the Baptist, came back and he started preaching Yahawashah, just like John the Baptist preached Yahawashah, all right, he paved the way for Yahawashah, all right, before he came, all right, and started his ministry. Okay, so that's the spirit of life entering into them, which are who the Israelites, and they stood upon their feet. They stood upon their feet. All right, the scriptures say, "Present your body a living sacrifice." Roman the twelfth chapter. You stand upon your feet. You go out there in the streets, on the street corners, and on the highways and byways, and you preach the word of the Lord. You stand upon your feet. You stand in great boldness. All right, and great fear fell upon them 
which saw them. So great fear fell upon them which saw them. So starting with Esau, Edom, great fear fell upon this, this devil when he started to see the men of the Lord waking up. Okay? When he started, I remember a story, you know, the apostles bring it out from time to time that, you know, back in the day, you know, there was an Edomite that came out of a, a limo, a limousine, all right, and came up to the, the, the apostles when they was teaching, which there was, a, you know, high priests and elders or, you know, you know, different ranking names at that time going back in the day. But this devil asked them or told them, if I'm not mistaken, you know, I mean, the, the story is, is there, but I don't want to butcher it. You know, they said um, something like, you know, we paid, we spent a lot of money to hide this truth or something like that. Or how did y'all figure this out? Something along those lines. But in other words, the devil was shocked that the men of the Lord were standing upon their feet. OK, and that was a sign of great fear falling upon them, which saw them. You know what I'm saying? Because they did they go out their way to hide this truth from us, man. Because this is our power. This is our lifeline. This is our source. This is what makes us Yashar Allah. This is our connection to the Heavenly Father, man. And that connection is, is has been built back. All right? And ultimately, that connection is going to come when the Lord raises us up and put, you know, give us spiritual powers. All right? Put the laws, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. All right? We are at the beginning stages of this this, this great turning, man. This, this this spiritual powers. This all these things, man. The Lord is about to raise us up in these last days, and Esau is in great fear. Okay, he's in great fear. Okay, because he knows the prophecies and he knows what's gonna happen. But that stubbornness, that stiff, that stiff headed or stiff heartedness in him is gonna allow him to fight, try to fight against this thing. Okay, so that's why it says, "And great fear fell upon them which saw them." So that's not just Esau. Everybody that see it, all these nations. Are seeing us calling ourselves the princes of the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. That's just, that's some scary shit. If you're a heathen, you better be scared. If you're a heathen, you better be scared because here it is: the people that you've been oppressing for all these centuries are standing upon their feet and saying who they are, saying that we are the sons of the Most High. All right, you better be scared. You better be scared. And you see, everything Esau Edom is doing in this earth today is a sign that he's afraid, man. We we we, we ain't, hey listen we are not supposed to be afraid of this mother effing devil, all right we ain't supposed to be afraid we not on the defense we on the offense man we playing a game, all right we are playing a game that the Most High set us up to play Esau's in defense mode man that's why he's gonna try to come down with great wrath you know Revelation twelve and twelve that's why he's gonna try to do these things not knowing that you know what you do know but not knowing deep inside that the Lord is gonna lift up a standard against him. All right, Yahweh Bashim Yahusha is going to lift up a standard against this devil, which is spiritual powers, and we're going to see miracles in these last days, man. I, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that we're going to see miracles in these last days. I expect miracles in these last days. I expect, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahusha to do what he said he was going to do as long as I keep my part of, 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 you know, the bargain, so to speak. You know, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. You know what I'm saying? Esau, you got all shits to be scared of, G. Word up. You got a whole lot to be scared of, man. All right? So, um, this is um, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, right? Now, the whole chapter is good, man. The whole chapter is, is beautiful. It's great. You know what I'm saying? It talks about the value of the dry bones. But I want to jump to the point. Verse 10, so it says, So I prophesied, and he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. All right, the breath, the breath came into who? Those that that woken up to this truth. All right, that those that I hate that that um excuse me that that have eaten the whole roll, because the breath is what life. The breath is life. The Holy Spirit is life. This truth is life. This truth is living waters. Okay, so as the prophets that have been before myself, you know my 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 elders, my apostles to this day, their their elders, their um their um. You know, um, elders over them, the high priests over them, the ones that I went back to the spirit world with Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for a few seconds or, or a few minutes. These men prophesied and commanded. And guess what? Breath came into those that heard it. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. That's the elect. It says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are, whole, are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they are... they." They, excuse me, behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. That's what the nations say, that our bones are dry, that our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. But a great miracle is taking place on this earth today, man. 
Yahweh Shem Yahshai has, has performed a great miracle. Us going from niggas, porch monkeys, wetback spicks, Indians, coconuts, you know, uh, all these bum ass bywords, man. Now we calling ourselves Yashar Allah, Prince of the Power, Prince of the you, Prince of the, the Most High, you know, that created everything, that created time itself. Like I said, y'all heathens better be scared, man. Because this is the real deal. And you about to see it. You, you, you seen it, but you about to see it, see it. All right? So it says, verse 12, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And that's what happened. That's what's happening right now. Okay? we, are, we The Lord opened up them graves. And we came out of those graves. And Israelites are still coming out of those graves. So Esau is, Esau is on some scary shit right now. He's scared. He's scared. He's seen all these, these dead people being resurrected spiritually. He's scared. He's scared of that. He's seen all these dead people. It's like you, let's say you know you know a bunch of you know people that die. You pass through a graveyard and you start seeing these dead bodies coming out of the grave. You're gonna be shook. You're gonna be shitting bullets. But Esau, Esau is seeing it on a different sense, a spiritual sense. All right, he's seen the Israelites that he tried so hard to to bring down, to oppress, to destroy, to 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 uh, tear out bands asunder, like the scriptures say. Okay, coming up out of these graves. Okay, now the Lord said, "I will cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel." Now that that latter end of the prophecies is going to happen when Yahweh shall come back. But the part of us coming out of our graves, um, Revelation the eighth chapter, it says, "In their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city." America is that great city, man. What's the greatest city on this earth in these in these present times? That's America. Babylon the Great. Babylon was a great, another great city at that time. But America is greater than Babylon. All right, that's why it's called Babylon the Great. Okay, because this is the this is the 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 icing on the cake, the cherry on top, the last of all any heathen nation on this planet Earth ever getting a chance to rule. This is it, and it's, it just so happened to be you damn devils, you Edomites. Matter of fact, I, I, when I say it just so happened, it's not a coincidence. It's prophecy. Let me come back to that. Um, Second Ezra chapter 6. Um, no, no, no. Not Second Ezra chapter 6. Uh, yeah, it is 6. 6 and 9. 6 and 9. It says, verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting of son of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth. Okay, it is Ezra asking the Heavenly Father about the, the, the times, the departing asunder of the times, the division of the times, meaning what what and what, the prophecies about you coming back. What is it going to be like? When should be the first, end of the first, and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, born of him, Jacob's hand held for, first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau is the end of the world. That's it. Esau, you are the end of the world. Okay, you ruled as the Greeks, you ruled as the Romans, and you ruled as the Edomites. Um, which you, all of them are Edomites, but you ruled as the Americans, I'm gonna say. You ruled as the Greeks, Romans, and America. Okay? Babylon, Babylon the Great, I should say. Okay? It's three strikes and you out. Three strikes and you out. You can't rule, you could never rule. It wasn't given unto you to rule. Because you, in order to rule this planet and these nations. The, the law, statute, and commandments, which is the guidance on how to rule properly, got to be imparted in you. But it's not. It's, that's not the covenant. You had no part of that covenant. No nation got part of that covenant but the Israelites. All right, that's um Psalms 147. All right, that's Psalms 147. Okay, 147 in verse 18. Uh, 19, it says, He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for their judgments, they have not known them. Praise you to the Lord. So the nations don't know how to judge. Why? Because they don't have the word. They don't have the guideline on what to judge and how to judge it. That's only for Israel. All right. That's only for Israel. So in order for this world to get right, Israelites got to be in power. And Israelites are about to be in power. All right. We, the power is here. The power is us waking up, knowing that we Israelites going out in the street corners and teaching and preaching and waking up and rebuking and reproving. And correcting ourselves first and foremost and repenting daily, that's a sign that we are almost out of here. This is Judges 5 and 11. In the land of um, drawn waters, they shall rehearse the righteous act. We are rehearsing the righteous act, man. Hey, we about to get the kingdom. We about to get the kingdom, man. We about to get the kingdom. 
And we know that we, you know, the kingdom ain't gonna come unless tribulation come first. All right, great tribulation is about to come first on this planet Earth. But you know what though? If that means eternal life, never able, never able to die, law, statute, and commandments written in evil parts, righteousness, you know, everything we are, every anything our hearts can desire. Our kingdom being paved in gold and built with precious stones that we either have never even seen, that, that just gives you all types of energy and positive vibrations, having slaves and an and, and endless amount of children and women, you know, hey, it's all worth the wait. It's all worth the wait because this suffering is temporal and it's very short. Yahweh Shah is coming back. So let me finish this off in, in um, Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies, spiritually dead, Okay, Ezekiel 37, shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is talking about America, Babylon, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, man. Okay, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt because America practices the custom of all these ancient cities and kingdoms that have ever came before them. Okay, including Babylon, Egypt, because this is, this is our longest captivity ever, just like ancient Egypt, Sodom, because this is the most H-O-M-O, -O, you know, I-S-T society ever. Okay, straight up, you know, where also our Lord was crucified because during from the Renaissance era, when Esau was it was conquering this land, that's when, you know, they started to, you know, do the iconoclasm, uh, repainting the images of the dark men, the, the saints, the Israelites who are dark skinned men, mainly our Lord, because he's the judges. So, um, um, what is that? Amos nine and um, Amos nine and um, nine and eight. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Job 9 and 24. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. Job. Let me go with Job. Job 9 and 24. Basic, basic scripture. You know, Israelite 101. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judge thereof. Who are the judges? The Israelites. Remember, Psalms 147. The judgments for Israelites to do. Okay, so who covered the faces of the Israelites? The Edomites. Okay, they, they in, a, in Apocrypha, it tells you that where the heathens they open um the book and sought to paint their, their 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 likeness, okay, of the image of the Israelites. You know, they did that. They did that, man. Where they, they opened a the book of the law where the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their own image. Roughly paraphrasing. It says he covered the faces of the judge thereof, which the ultimate judge is Yahweh Shah. They made him a so called white man, Caesar Borgia, or Cesare, okay? The second son of Pope Alexander. All right, the sixth of Rome, okay? The so-called white man, the Edomites, you know? That's these devils, okay? And all that is just proof that we are at the end because he's being exposed. That's why the scriptures say in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, that they ain't gonna come until that man of sin be revealed. Sin means transgression of the law. Esau breaks every law under the sun, okay? It's not in him to, to, to keep a law. The scriptures say that the wicked are estranged from the womb. They be born speaking evil and lies. So it says, if not, okay, if not, where and who is he? So if it ain't Esau, then where? That's the question. If it ain't Esau, then where is he? And who is he? That's the question. Where is he and who is he? That's, that's the question. Everybody trying to pin it on somebody else. Oh, Esau is the, Esau is the Hawaiians or Japhite or, or whatever the hell you saying. Y'all niggas know, y'all capping right now. Y'all know that Esau Edom is a so-called white man, so stop it. All right, you know that, okay? The truth is a hard pill to swallow, okay? <laughs> but somehow, somewhere, you better swallow it, for real. So, last scripture, I'm going to close out on this. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs, part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Okay? And one of the signs, which is the scripture I opened up with, is that the man of sin being revealed. That's a major sign. That is that is probably the major sign. Okay? That the devil is being revealed for who he is. And we see Esau trying to counterattack or attack us, I should say, rather. Okay? He's pushing this whole, um, this whole thing. This thingy thing thing. I don't got to say what it is. You know what I'm saying? But he's pushing this whole thing right now. And he's targeting who? The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, so-called. The true Israelites of the Most High. 
there's a reason why he's doing that because there's something in that thing that this devil want Jake to have, okay, for a reason to destroy Jake. So if you're Israelite and you take in what this, what this devil got to offer, you out your damn mind, all right? And if any Israelite group or teacher or leader is telling you to take what, the, what this devil is giving, then you, hey, you better not, you better repent, or you're going to die when Yahweh Shai come back and before he come back. And we're going to leave it at that, man. All right, you've been warned. All right, you Israelites, you've been warned. You better repent and get right. All right, you better repent and get right. All right, and that applies to men and women. Okay, men and women. So anyway, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to end it here, Lord willing, I pray to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakak Wadash, that this was an edifying lesson to the elect of the nation of Israel. Till next time, I say Shalom.